What will we eat tomorrow? The question that lingers in all of our homes, the reason behind our daily dilemmas. We all fall into the never ending trap of this seemingly simple question. Welcome to MA English. In today's video, we'll tackle this familiar foe head on by diving into a series of everyday conversations that many of us encounter on a daily basis. Through these conversations, we'll not only explore common scenarios but also learn helpful English expressions and vocabulary to navigate them confidently. So, grab a snack, settle in, and let's conquer the dinnertime dilemma together. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the MA English channel for more engaging lessons, and click the notification bell to stay updated on our latest content. Well, tomorrow's another day, another meal to plan. I'm fresh out of ideas, honey. What would you like for dinner? I don't mind, anything's fine. Ah, uh, the classic anything's fine response. You know, that response is just as helpful as a chocolate teapot. Okay, okay, how about pasta? Pasta again? We had pasta three nights ago. Besides, your father's been complaining about his carb intake lately. Dad's carb intake? Since when does he care about carbs? The man practically inhales those bakery cookies you buy. Hey, don't tell your father I said that. And besides, those cookies are different. They're homemade, with love. Pasta is just noodles. Noodles that are delicious, versatile, and come in a million different shapes and sauces. You could make pesto, alfredo, lasagna, carbonara. Hold on, hold on. Are you suggesting I spend all day tomorrow slaving over a hot stove making some fancy Italian dish? I'm not your personal chef, you know. Okay, okay, I get it. Just suggesting options. How about chicken? Chicken? We had chicken last Tuesday, and the Tuesday before that, and the Monday before. Oh no, not chicken again. Not the bland, boring, tasteless chicken. Tasteless? Then, who ate all the leftover chicken parmesan the other day with extra mozzarella and marinara sauce? That was different. Different how? It was still chicken. Look, honey, I appreciate that you're trying to help, but every suggestion you've made so far is either something we've had recently or something your father wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. Well, you could always just order pizza. Order pizza? Seriously, Ben, that's the best you can come up with? We can't have pizza every night. What am I, some kind of college dorm cafeteria? Hey, at least dorm cafeterias have a variety of options. See, this is exactly what I mean. I ask you for one simple suggestion, and it turns into a full-blown debate about the merits of dorm food. Maybe I should just order myself a burrito bowl and leave you to figure it out. Fine. Go ahead. Order your burrito bowl and eat it in your room like a hermit. Just because I asked for your help doesn't mean I want you to criticize every single suggestion I make. Uh, okay, mom. Sorry. Ugh, why did I even bother asking him? Now I'm more stressed than before. Maybe I should just have cereal for dinner. Hey honey, there you are. Did you finish your homework? Yep, all done. So, what's for dinner tomorrow, Mom? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Your brother wasn't exactly helpful. Ben? Not helpful? Shocking. What did he suggest? Everything and nothing. Pasta, chicken, pizza, then proceeded to criticize every single option because apparently, 
Dorm food has more variety than what I can cook. Oh dear. Well, let me see if I can do better. How about tacos? Tacos. Now that's an idea. We haven't had those in ages. Great. We could make our own guacamole, get some fresh pico de gallo, and maybe even marinate the chicken ourselves. Marinate? Honey, I'm exhausted from work. I don't have the energy for a gourmet taco night. Oh, come on, Mom. It wouldn't be that much work. And think of the deliciousness. Hmm. All right, all right. You've convinced me. But we're keeping it simple, okay? No fancy marinades or anything. Yay. You won't regret this, Mom. Now, how about we add some grilled veggies on the side? They're healthy and colorful. Healthy and colorful, huh? Honey, I just want a simple taco night, not a five course health extravaganza. And maybe, just maybe, we could try making our own tortillas from scratch? It's not that hard, and they taste way better than store bought ones. From scratch? Chloe, you know I'm not exactly the most patient baker in the world. We'll be at it for hours. Don't worry, Mom. I'll help. We can put on some music, make a whole thing out of it. It'll be fun. Fun, huh? I think the only thing fun about all this is seeing you so excited. But fine, fine. We'll try making the tortillas from scratch. Just promise me it won't turn into an all night flower fight. No flower fights, I promise. Now, let's go make a grocery list. We'll need fresh cilantro, limes, avocados. One step at a time, honey. One step at a time. And maybe some jalapenos for a little kick. Oh, and don't forget the cheese. We need at least three different kinds. I should have just ordered that pizza. Mark, I need your help. Uh huh. With what? Don't tell me the roof is leaking again. No, the roof is fine. It's dinner. I can't decide what to make tomorrow. Dinner? Huh? Didn't Ben offer his expert opinion? Expert? More like critic. Everything I suggested, he had a reason to dislike it. Apparently, I'm a terrible cook who only knows how to make bland, boring chicken. Really? Since when does he care about his food being exciting? I thought he lived off instant ramen and frozen burritos. Teenage angst, I guess. Anyway, then Chloe came in with her healthy and colorful taco extravaganza idea. Apparently, a simple taco night wasn't good enough for her either. She wants to make everything from scratch, including the tortillas. From scratch? Huh? Sounds like a recipe for disaster. Remember the time she tried to bake a cake from scratch and ended up with a lopsided, flower-coated mess on the counter? Don't remind me. Anyway, I'm starting to think I should just order pizza and be done with it. Hold on, hold on. Before you resort to pizza, let me think. What are you in the mood for? Honestly, I don't even know anymore. Everything sounds unappealing after the barrage of suggestions I got. Well, how about we skip the whole decision-making process altogether? We could raid the fridge and pantry, see what random ingredients we can cobble together, and whip up something spontaneous. Spontaneous? You mean, no plan, no recipe, just wing it? Exactly. Think of it as an adventure in the culinary unknown. Who knows, we might just create a masterpiece. Or at least something edible. I don't know, Mark. It sounds a bit risky. Come on, live a little. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? We burn some toast? Order takeout? 
It's not like we're opening a Michelin-starred restaurant here. You're right. Maybe I've been taking dinner planning a bit too seriously. All right, let's do it. Operation Mystery Meal is a go. Now that's the spirit. Now, where did I put that spatula? Just leave the cooking to me, honey. You be in charge of moral support and taste testing. Deal. And hey, if it all goes south, we can always blame Ben and Chloe for giving you recipe anxiety. Oh, you know I will. There, I said it. I shouldn't have asked anyone. I should have just known better. Asking Ben for suggestions was like trying to get a weather forecast from a squirrel. Everything was either too plain or not what he feels like. Honestly, the boy lives off instant noodles and frozen burritos, and suddenly he's become a culinary critic? Give me a break. And Chloe, oh, Chloe, don't get me started on Chloe. Her enthusiasm is admirable, I suppose, but her idea of a simple taco night involved marinating the chicken ourselves, making tortillas from scratch, and turning it into a five-course health extravaganza. I just wanted tacos, Chloe, not a culinary marathon. And Mark, bless his heart, tried to be helpful. His Operation Mystery Meal idea sounded intriguing at first, but who knows? We could end up with a culinary disaster zone on our hands. I'm not exactly known for my improvisational cooking skills. Maybe next time, I'll just cook in peace. No consultations, no suggestions, just me and my recipe book. Maybe then, just maybe, I can enjoy planning dinner again instead of dreading it. Yeah, next time, no asking. I've learned my lesson. Hey everyone, let's dive into some interesting words you might have seen in the conversation between Anna and Ben. 1. Fresh out of ideas. This means that Anna has no more ideas left, like a container that is completely empty. Imagine a juice box that's been squeezed dry. That's how fresh out makes us feel. 2. Classic response. This describes a common or typical answer, like the hello and goodbye we use every day. It's like a well-worn path that everyone uses. 3. Chocolate teapot. This is a fun idiom, meaning something that is useless or impractical. It's like a teapot made of chocolate which wouldn't hold hot water for long. It's a silly way to say something isn't helpful, kind of like saying, that suggestion is about as useful as a birthday candle on a cupcake. You can't eat it. 4. Versatile. This means something can be used in many different ways, like a Swiss army knife with all its tools. Pasta is versatile because it goes well with many sauces and dishes. 5. Slaving over a hot stove. This is a playful way to say someone is working hard and overexerting themselves in a hot kitchen. It paints a picture of someone sweating over a stove, like a superhero cooking up a delicious meal. 6. Bland, boring, tasteless. These words describe something lacking flavor or excitement, like a plain white piece of bread. They help us picture something that might not be very interesting to eat. 7. Marinara sauce. This is a delicious tomato sauce commonly used in Italian dishes like pasta and pizza. It's like capturing the taste of sunshine and fresh tomatoes in a jar. 8. With a 10-foot pole, this idiom means someone wouldn't touch something even if they had a long pole, like a staff with 10 feet of space between them and the object. It shows how much someone dislikes something. 9. Exasperated. This describes someone who is frustrated and annoyed, like a balloon that's been blown up too much and is about to pop. 10. Full-blown debate. This means a serious and lengthy discussion, like a battle of words on a specific topic. It's like two sides arguing their points back and forth, just like Anna and Ben debating the merits of dorm food. 11. Hermit. This is someone who lives alone, 
and avoids social interaction, like a crab hiding in its shell. It's used here playfully to describe Ben wanting to eat alone in his room. 12. Cereal for dinner. This is a simple and quick meal, often associated with childhood. It's like a comfort food that reminds us of simpler times, even if it's not the most nutritious option. 13. Gestures vaguely. This means Anna waves her hand or body in a nonspecific way, indicating she doesn't have a clear answer or plan. Imagine you're trying to point at something in the distance that you can't quite see clearly. 14. Shocking. This means something is surprising or unexpected, like seeing a cat wearing a tiny cowboy hat. Here, Chloe expresses surprise that Ben wasn't helpful. 15. Gourmet. This describes food that is of high quality and prepared with great care, like a fancy meal at a restaurant. Chloe's taco night idea with marinated chicken leans towards this. 16. Convinced. This means Chloe has persuaded Anna to agree with her suggestion, like using a magic spell to change someone's mind. It shows Chloe's enthusiasm is winning over her mom. 17. Extravaganza. This describes something elaborate and excessive, like a birthday party with fireworks and a marching band. Chloe's vision of a healthy and colorful taco night might seem a bit over the top to Anna. 18. From scratch. This means something is made from the very beginning, using raw ingredients, like building a house from the foundation up. Chloe suggests making tortillas from scratch, which can be time-consuming. 19. Disbelief. This describes a feeling of doubt or surprise, like not believing your eyes when you see a friend win the lottery. Anna can't quite believe Chloe wants to make tortillas from scratch. 20. Reassuringly. This describes something that is meant to calm or comfort someone, like a warm hug after a bad day. Chloe pats her mom's shoulder to assure her making tortillas can be fun. 21. Barely above a whisper. This means Anna's voice is very quiet, perhaps because she's feeling overwhelmed or defeated. Imagine someone speaking so softly you can barely hear them. 22. Kick. This can refer to adding a spicy element to something, like adding chili flakes to a dish for a bit of heat. Here, Chloe suggests jalapenos to add a spicy kick to the tacos. 23. Muttering to herself. This means Anna is speaking quietly and mostly to herself, perhaps expressing her thoughts or frustrations in a low voice. Imagine talking under your breath, almost like you're talking to yourself. 24. Dramatically. This describes something done in an exaggerated or theatrical way, like an actor crying so hard their tears look like waterfalls. Here, Anna sighs in a dramatic way to emphasize her frustration. 25. Expert. This describes someone who has a lot of knowledge or skill in a particular area, like a doctor who is an expert in treating heart conditions. Ben is jokingly referred to as an expert on dinner options, despite his picky and unhelpful suggestions. 26. Scuffs. This means to make a short, sharp sound of disbelief or disapproval, like someone snorting air through their nose. Anna scoffs at the idea of Ben being an expert cook. 27. Bland, boring. These words describe something lacking in flavor or excitement, like a plain white piece of toast. Here, they are used to describe the food Ben seems to prefer. 28. Teenage angst. This refers to the feelings of stress, anxiety, and rebellion that teenagers often experience. It's used to explain why Ben might be picky with his food choices. 29. Extravaganza. This describes something elaborate and excessive, like a birthday party with fireworks and a marching band. Chloe's taco night idea with homemade tortillas and healthy additions is seen as a bit much by Anna. 30. Recipe for disaster. This is a metaphor meaning a plan or course of action that is likely to lead to failure. Here, Mark uses it jokingly to describe Chloe's ambitious taco night plan. 31. Barrage. This describes a sudden and overwhelming amount of something, like a heavy rain shower. 
Anna feels bombarded with suggestions from Ben and Chloe, making it difficult to choose. 32. Unappealing. This means something is not attractive or pleasant, like a pile of dirty dishes. Everything sounds unappealing to Anna after the overwhelming suggestions. 33. Spontaneous. This describes something done without being planned in advance, like deciding to go for a walk on a whim. Mark suggests a spontaneous dinner by using whatever ingredients they have on hand. 34. Wing it. This is a slang term meaning to do something without a plan or preparation, like improvising during a presentation. Mark suggests winging it with dinner by making something up as they go. 35. Culinary unknown. This is a metaphor referring to the world of cooking and all the unknown possibilities that come with trying new recipes or ingredients. Mark describes their spontaneous dinner as an adventure in the culinary unknown. 36. Masterpiece. This describes something exceptionally beautiful or well-made, like a famous painting or a delicious meal. Mark jokingly uses this term to describe the potential outcome of their spontaneous dinner. 37. Hesitates. This means to pause or delay before doing something, often because you are unsure or doubtful. Anna hesitates before agreeing to Mark's spontaneous dinner idea. 38. Risky. This describes something that involves danger or the possibility of failure, like climbing a mountain. Anna feels a bit risky about making dinner without a plan. 39. Michelin Star Restaurant. This refers to a restaurant that has received the highest rating from the Michelin Guide, a prestigious food rating system. Mark uses this as a comparison to emphasize that their spontaneous dinner doesn't have to be perfect. 40. Moral support. This refers to encouragement and emotional support given to someone, like cheering on a friend during a competition. Mark offers to be Anna's moral support during their spontaneous cooking adventure. 41. Playful smile. This describes a smile that is not serious or meant to be harmful, but rather expresses amusement or affection. Anna has a playful smile as she agrees to Mark's suggestion, showing she's open to having fun with it. 42. Recipe anxiety. This is a humorous term combining the idea of needing a recipe to cook with the feeling of anxiety or stress. Mark uses it jokingly to describe how Ben and Chloe's suggestions might have made Anna feel overwhelmed. So there you have it. You've learned even more interesting words and expressions to add to your vocabulary. Remember, the more you explore and experiment with language, the more confident and comfortable you'll become in using it to express yourself.